So I'm going to present a case uh, thrombolyzed fuse back uh, by tonic fibrillase. Uh, first slide. Next. Uh, 72 year male. He was a father of a doctor. He, uh, he was MBBS. Uh, his son was MBBS, and uh, this person was astrologer. He was non diabetic and non hypertensive, right handed, and he was also graduate. Next. He presented with difficulty in understanding. Uh, a relative says there was difficulty in hearing, not speaking anything since last two hours, no any significant limb weakness. Next. So uh, it was actually referred by uh, that MBBS person to me. And uh, when uh, he was admitted, the pulse was 120, but it, it was irregularly regular. Blood pressure was around 140 by 90. Respiratory was, was 14 by minute. Sugar was 101 milligram per uh, DL. And uh, CNS examination, I see uh, global aphasia. And there was right upper limb and lower limb drift. Right plantar was extensor. And there was a slight facial weakness. Uh, imaging, uh, actually, I advised, but uh, he came with uh, imaging. So uh, next. This is uh, ECG, it's not seen so, but you can see there is a irregular rhythm and P wave is not seen. Uh, you can, uh, this is very old case. So this was e uh, ECG showing the arterial fibrillation and the rate was uh, 120 uh, nearly around. And the, uh, he presented with uh, me with uh, brain with hand, uh, brain MRI with angio. Uh, actually, we do generally CT or CT with angio. But he directly presented with uh, to me with MRI and Joe. So you can see there is a large infarct uh, in the uh, speech area, the Wernicke's and Broca's area. Uh, next. This is the MRI and Joe. Uh, uh, there is a attenuation of the M3 vessels, uh, more on the left side. Also, there is also right side, uh, there is uh, uh, attenuation of the vessels in uh, M2 or M3 segments. Next. Uh, uh, CBC was normal. There was no contraindication to TPA treatment. NHS score, uh, I counted, that was around 5. Next. So tannic plus was given according to 0.2 mg per kg, uh, according to weight. There was no worsening. After one hour, significant improvement in speech was seen. He can speak but cannot comprehend, write, or read. Naming was also impaired. Next. We did uh, some routine investigation in the stroke uh, echo uh, because atrial fibrillation was there. So we did the echo that LV function was 60%. There was no uh, clot. And so there is LV hypertrophy. Next. Other investigations were done, RFT, LFT, electrolytes, thyroid, and lipid profile. Everything was normal. Next. After CT, 24 hours after CT, uh, this was, there was no bleeding. And uh, there was improvement. Uh, clinically, there was improvement. Next. Now, there was a problem because uh, this, uh, I suspected cardioembolic stroke. Uh, there was atrial fibrillation, and rate was higher than the 100. Uh, but there was also some uh, kind of atherosclerosis. I've, uh, I noted that uh, this, the vessels were uh, narrowed. So I also started uh, Ecosprin 150 and Inoxaparin 0.60 BD. And uh, I took the advice of cardiologists. He started metaprolol BD until the resting heart rate was 80. He also started amiterone 200 milligram BD. And statin, Rojoa statin was P1 to 10 milligram. Next. After five days plan, uh, there was a plan to shift to the anticoagulant as there was no use in fact. So we plan to shift to the anticoagulant. Next. So I uh, I uh, see the Chad West 2 score, uh, Chad score and Chad West vascular score. So uh, this is this recommended high. Uh, patient was slightly pre-hypertensive stage. Age was uh, uh, around us nearby 74. And uh, there's a stroke. Next. 
and as i also did the has blood score that took about hypertension abnormal uh, there was no renal or liver dysfunction stroke there was present uh, there is no bleeding tendency or predisposition uh, the patient was not any uh, anticoagulant but uh, his age was more than 65 uh, he was not on drug or any alcohol next so we, we can see it uh, in this case chat west 2 core was 4 and has blood score was 3 so i i plan to give him a uh, direct anti uh, direct from an inhibitors next so according to uh, european society uh, guidelines atrial fibrillation risk stratification and uh, oral anticoagulant treatment the chat west 2 score is more than 2 uh, and has blood score uh, i consider also has blood score so i started the uh, a uh, direct thrombin inhibitor next uh direct thrombin inhibitor i started uh, debigatron 110 mg bd uh, with ecosprin 150 mg uh, uh, per day in follow up uh, after 2 months actually it was in 2018 so uh, so patient can speak normal comprehension was there repetition was normal reading and writing was normal still occasionally there was naming difficulty no any limb weakness as he was a astrologer so i recommend him to write uh, a page next so after two month you can see this is in gujarati uh, he wrote a big lesson and his name also which sri ganesha and namo and everything uh, so the beautiful writing by patient next thank you for uh, this so there was a excellent result in this uh, case i found in global aphasia what was the daughter needle time uh yes sir pardon sir what was the daughter needle time and stroke to needle time yeah it was uh, two and half hour for what Do- stroke to needle time Yeah, stroke to needle time. Because he presented two hours late. Because he presented two hours late. Because his son did the MRI first, uh, MRI with angiography, and he's uh, he he presented to me with MRI directly. So time has gone to two and a half hours. That was because uh, his son he was he was MBBS, so he did not uh, recognize that it's a uh, acute stroke or not. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know. So this uh, we have noticed many times that uh, <clears throat> when uh, another hospital is involved, and uh, then they come to a stroke center, always there is wastage of time. Wastage of yes. time. So you know they go to a peripheral hospital, which is not a stroke ready hospital. and then they come to a stroke ready center so you know as a neurologist now you know i i've been thinking about this and you know ruining it you know and breaking my head that you know we have to go out into the community and uh, uh, inform people inform lay public inform general practitioners inform uh, consulting physicians that see you for stroke you have to come to a stroke ready hospital going from scan center to scan center doing the scan then coming to this thing it always wastes a lot of time and earlier you treat these patients always the results are uh, better so door to needle time and stroke to needle time you know to reduce and to improve the uh, functionality of the patient it is uh, it is imperative that the patient comes to a stroke hospital and you know we have to tell this and go out into the community and give lectures on this you know there are many factors why these patients don't come in time but it's so distressing you know they go to some small hospital they waste time they send the patient to some other hospital or other mri center stand alone mri center stand alone ct center and then they come through all the traffic that uh, all indian cities have faced with so you know this thing we have to 
uh, encourage people to come directly to the stroke hospital. Unfortunately, I've been breaking my head on this issue. I've been failing miserably. Uh, but, you know, there have been some successes. And uh, so we must continue with this effort. And uh, very often, sorry to say, very often we find, you know, when a, a, a consulting physician is involved or a GP yes. is involved, often there is delay. I should not say this with, with some of my colleagues and who are my friends, but this is the bitter truth. Yes, sir. So I'm sure, Dr. Yes, Jindal, you have also faced this issue. Yes, sir. Similarly, sir. Similar. <laughs> it's yeah. same yeah. here in Delhi also. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, with the, with the traffic in big cities, you know, it's very difficult for patient to come in time. Even mm -hmm. the ambulances get stuck in the traffic. Get stuck in you the know? traffic, yes. So, so these, these are things which we have to fight. And uh, these things are uh, important. Uh, Dr. Badresh, in your case, there was a previous stroke also on the other side. Yes, yes. On the right that side was side. on the left. Uh, I think that was on the other side. Uh, there was a yes. scar. So, I think. Yeah. so actually, you know, this patient should have been on uh, NOAX right from the beginning because there was a previous stroke. If, yes, uh, yes. if there is already a stroke, that means the child VAS score is definitely more than two. You don't have okay. to think, it, is there hypertension, okay. is there LVH, is the age this. If there is a stroke, child VAS score is more than two. If it is more okay. than two, means you have to anticoagulate. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and this, this is One definitely thing, uh, a hard huh? Yes. Well, one thing I would tell you that uh, this patient then uh, then was not uh, in follow-up with me. He went to some uh, physician and he converted to warfarin and he then presented with INR9 to me. Then I again <laughs> shifted him to Debigator, uh, 110 milligram BD. Then he was stable. So there was, uh, at this 70 point, I have seen that uh, uh, the this were oral direct thrombin inhibitors may be uh, useful. There was labile INR in this patient. There is no I don't doubt know what was absolutely it. that uh, DOAX are better than warfarin. Yeah. Uh, in the dose of 110, it is equal to warfarin. And in the dose of 150 to, uh, BD, it is superior to warfarin. Superior but to warfarin. But the really most good. important thing is that uh, intracerebral hemorrhage is much less with dabigatran than with warfarin. So there are yeah. compelling reasons to use uh, DOAX now. And that is level 1A evidence to use DOAX compared to warfarin. Warfarin we would restrict to people who have uh, uh, prosthetic valve or uh, severe rheumatic heart disease with AF. But uh, otherwise, in non-valvular AF, there is absolutely no doubt that uh, the drug of choice is DOAC, whichever one you like, but uh, <clears throat> uh, whether it's Dabigatron or Apexaban, that, that hardly matters because there's no head-to-head -head study over, uh, one over the other. Uh, so whichever one you want. And th there are so many conveniences of using DOACs. Sir, may I ask now, you one thing? Yes. Sir, uh, what's your experience in cases of uh, 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 like cortical vein thrombosis or sinus thrombosis? We are now uh, using Dabigatron for all these cases. Okay. Not using warfarin anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have... Uh, because you know, this, this labile INR and this checking, yes, checking the INR, you know, every 10, 15 days. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The labs are also not properly standardized. You get some crazy result. You don't know mm -hmm. where, what you are dealing with. There is so much yes, patient sir. anxiety, waiting for the report, spending the whole day uh, waiting for the report, then showing that report to the doctor. You know, mm -hmm. so actually it is wasting so much time and effort. And uh, so, you know, everyone used to say that, no, no, people in India cannot afford uh, no X. But actually, if you see now with uh, uh, generic molecules also coming in, that uh, it is fully affordable and you don't it's have really to do the INR and you don't have to the, uh, undergo the anxiety and showing the doctor all the time these results. So, Sir, out, uh, of these, uh, should, out of these two, three DOACs like uh, uh, Rivroxaban and uh, Apexaban and uh, Debigatran, 
so uh, what's your uh, experience uh, mainly in stroke and cvt uh, which molecule you prefer sir i prefer dabigatran but you know there is nothing more because you know there is an antidote available and you know we've had to use sometimes the antidote uh, <laughs> but uh, but it depends on patient uh, patient uh, characteristics suppose there is renal failure <laughs> and you know gfr is poor then we would like to use apixaban apixaban suppose there is gi disturbance we would not like to use dabigatran suppose <laughs> the person cannot swallow the tablet whole then we cannot use dabigatran you know <laughs> so there are individual characteristics of patients where we select the appropriate drug but as far as effectiveness is concerned though there is no head to head study i think the effectiveness is more or less the same okay so sir and the and the, bleeding risk is more or less the same it depends on the situation liver failure is there hepatic failure is there gi disturbance is there the ppi is going on uh, mm -hmm. you know things like that that helps you to decide which uh, noac to use but otherwise uh, for effectiveness for the usual run of the mill patient i don't think there's any difference anil okay. would you like to comment um the only thing i would like to comment in this case is that the global aphasia recovered very well you know that's something which we don't so commonly see in fact if you see the writing also of the patient usually they stop at conduction aphasia like most patients who have global aphasia when they recover and here this patient's writing also was pretty good so i think here um probably the patient had some association areas which was spared you know which actually helped in the recovery when you look at it or probably the perfusion was well maintained you know that's the only thing which i would like to comment because when someone has global aphasia we've seen so often that even after you thrombolyze there is some sort of a residual sort of a deficit which is usually unmasked whenever they are uh, you know like you, you make them read or write and out here his writing also was pretty good so you know that's one thing which i would like to comment it's actually a very good result here for the patient but yeah, otherwise i think it's a cardioembolic stroke and patient should have been on actually a novac earlier itself which should have prevented the stroke in the first place uh and uh, dr badresh why did you add aspirin uh i was reluctant initially but uh, i thought that uh, both sided mci uh, i see i uh, if we see the middle arteries uh, middle cerebral arteries there was attenuation of the m2 and m3 segments so i i also thought there may be some atherosclerotic pathology associated with it uh, so i uh, use the uh, ecospin so it may be yeah, some you know, combo dangerous risk, huh? yes it yes. increases uh, the bleeding risk yes uh, you, uh, you are right sir but uh, i thought that may be the reason that's why i added so i i suspected two etiology cardiomyopathic as well as also some atherosclerotic etiology no actually you know this time of flight uh, tof uh, mr ngo is very poor poor, uh, poor in, yes in in um, in uh, you know determining uh, uh, atherosclerosis really and uh, another thing is you know you also gave anoxaparin uh, actually there is no role for anoxaparin so if we have to start uh, uh, an anticoagulant according to diners uh, not law i would say diners hypothesis according to the day you can straight away start doax uh, right. you know on day 5 or day 6 there's no need to pre uh, pre treat with uh, low molecular weight heparin mm. yeah. so so this is a good case uh, you know uh, even with low nihss you said nihss is 5 right. but uh, you know the uh, the uh, deficit is very disabling it's yes, a yes. very disabling aphasia uh, global okay. or even brocas or uh, even wernicke's is highly disabling so even if nihss is 2 with a disabling stroke 
uh, you should thrombolize the patient. Yes, sir. You know, just don't go by it because NIHSs in these particular situations always gives you a wrong impression. Mm -hmm. So, if it is low NIHSs but disabling stroke, this is a case for thrombolysis. Yes, and I think you have done extremely well uh, in uh, treating this patient and many, many congratulations to you for uh, treating this patient so well. And uh, many, many times we have found that, you know, M2 and M3, they just dissolve with tenecteplase. So, you know, with large vessel occlusion, this is not very large vessel occlusion. I would call it mid medium level occlusion, medium vessel occlusion. So this is the exact and most appropriate case to give thrombolysis. And yes. it has shown in the results. Uh, the, there could be an infarct. There could be a small infarct. But you've saved a large part of the infarct, large part of the penumbra and the oligemic zone. And probably you've recanalized the vessel. So many, many congratulations to you for uh, treating this patient and reducing his morbidity because aphasia, you know, for anyone, you know, everyone says that, no, no, if he's a professor, aphasia is important. But aphasia is important even for a housewife or anyone. If you can't speak, it is highly disabling. So, you know, just because he's an astrologer and he has to talk to people or uh, that is all nonsense. Uh, mm -hmm. Any patient even housewife or anyone, aphasia is highly disabling. So you must aggressively treat these patients. Any comments, please, from Anil and uh, Dr. Jindal? Sir, you are rightly said uh, it's no, all, not only aphasia, but uh, like agnosia or prosopagnosia agnosia or sometimes yes, uh, yes. homolimus aminopia, they all are indication. Many times in yes, patient yes, past, yes, you yes. find only homolimus aminopia. Yeah, and, homo uh, homo 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 is very disabling because very disabling. you can't drive. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't drive. And, uh, you know, so so don't take it lightly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, don't take it lightly. It is highly disabling. So I even though see. NIHS may be two only, you know, if, if you see a man of if you see the uh, NIHS, It will be only two. two. Yeah, only two. But it's but highly we have to disabling. Complain. You cannot drive. You become dependent on other people. And then, you know, with, with the amenopia, you may have uh, uh, the reading difficulty. You may have, um, you know, word, uh, not word fighting. You may have prosopognosia. You may have so many other things. So these are not contraindications by mm -hmm. any chance, by any stretch of imagination. Yes, Anil? Yes, sir. So I completely agree here, yes, sir. Sir, um, in fact, that's something which we often miss. You know, NHS is misleading for aphasia and hemianopia. So, you know, I think it's far more disabling. So, and uh, it's often not taken into account. So, we always say that the patient has a low NHS and we don't thrombolize these patients. In fact, we should aggressively thrombolize almost all patients. This is how I believe, you know, because I've seen patients who maybe wait and then a few hours later they worsen. And then you lost the window for thrombolysis. Yeah. So and that's the way I go about it. Yeah. Uh, so I think we've discussed everything in this case. Uh, the points we made was that patients should come directly to a stroke center. Uh, very important. And therefore, we must go out into the community and educate uh, the lay public okay. and doctors, especially. And the more doctors who get involved, the less likely that thrombolysis will occur because of delay. <laughs> therefore, uh, no, it's it's true. I'm sure yes, you sir. have also faced it. And, you know, yes, opinion after opinion and, you know, uh, then phone up this fellow and phone up that fellow. Uh, one, and they're, they're not so aware as we are, you know, of thrombolysis. So they don't know. They don't know the benefit. They've not seen the benefit. We have seen the benefit mm -hmm. on day-to-day -day yes. basis. So it, we as leaders of uh, this thing have to go out and educate these people. And uh, sometimes you have to be a little rude also. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> you have to be rude to be kind. So, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, it may sound rude, but it's not rude, actually. It's for the patient's benefit. So it's not rude. 
but it sounds rude to some people and you know they get angry and offended but there's nothing to get offended in science you know it's it's a science people if they get offended it's their problem really so we have to be firm in our decision and yes, uh, <clears throat> uh we've had two very very interesting cases uh ketan's case was just amazing and uh, badresh's case also brought out so many important points uh with management Uh, patient should come early low nihs should be treated uh, the use of doax when to start doax uh, what rehabilitation you should do uh, how you should treat af how you should bring down the rate uh, involve the cardiologist uh, so many important uh, you know micro decisions have to be made in every stroke so it's not one decision of thrombolysis there are so many decisions mm-hmm. admitting to icu treating the af when to start doac which doac to start uh, how to see the creatinine uh, the change over from warfarin to doac uh, whether to give aspirin or not there are so many in every case there are so many micro decisions to be made and each decision is so important for uh, good patient care so uh, both these patients both these cases i think have brought out many many f- Uh, uh factors in stroke management and i think we have learned a lot so i will ask for uh, closing comments from dr anil and dr uh, jindal and i'm sure we have enjoyed this evening very very much anil sir one question uh-huh. yeah uh sir anybody has thrombolysis in the cra or central retinal artery occlusion i have two patients it is like it is, see there uh-huh, is yes. no rct uh-huh. there is no yeah. rct so there is no guideline yes. if there is no rct there cannot be a guideline but okay people have done it the thing is that it has to be detected early yes sir people have thrombolyzed uh, some of our doctors in maharashtra one dr dhonde from uh, nanded has uh, uh, thrombolyzed two patients and they have done well yeah. even with branch occlusion Uh, retinal branch occlusion yes. with altitudinal field defect you can thrombolyze of course you have to do it within the first 4.5 hours yes it's very difficult to do mechanical thrombectomy because the vessel is very small but there is definitely a role for ibt but it is not in the guidelines because no trial has been done but there are many things which okay. are not in the guidelines that doesn't mean that yes, you sir. should not do because guidelines can okay. only come if there is an rct if there is no rct how can there be a guideline so i have yes. thrombolyzed one case i have thrombolyzed yeah. one case and that patient had a complete recovery yeah. so yeah. you know it's my personal experience with one case yeah. uh, but again yeah. it's anecdotal but we had no option we went ahead with all the risks we explained to the patient and patient showed a fantastic recovery uh, yes it was in the first like two and a half hours the patient had immediately presented the ophthalmologist made a diagnosis sent to the I'll see you, and we just thrombolyze the patient. We already got a scan done, also. We only got a CT done, but clinically, everything was in favor, and patient showed a very good recovery. So, I mean, I I think such cases you have to take it on a case by case. You can't just wait for evidence. You know, you have to weigh the risk benefit, and then you will have to go ahead. And that's how. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So you know, anecdotes also have made the history. and you know every time you can't have an uh, rct exactly you know <laughs> anecdotes abi anecdote jenner when he gave uh, the uh, small pox vaccine was anecdote syndrome rabies vaccine Sindor. it was anecdote so levodopa was an anecdote Levodo- anecdote so you know <laughs> anecdotes mean. make history so don't uh, disregard anecdotes they are important chetan choudhury by uh, thrombolyzing uh, this thing has it is an anecdote but it has shown improvement hmm. now there is no <laughs> rct on uh, anterior spinal artery thrombosis but you have to you have to be sensible uh, make proper decision and take patient into confidence and do it i mean there is no harm i mean you you write down you safeguard yourself of course properly and uh, do it i mean nobody is saying no and there is literature evidence also anil uh, on this though there is no rct there are anecdotal reports in the literature also so you are protected and you know the risk 
of uh, thrombolyzing a stroke mimic. Suppose, okay, it was not anti-artery uh, yes. CRO. It was something else. Very unlikely that it was something else. But for argument's sake, suppose it was something else. Even to uh, thrombolyze a stroke mimic, the risk is less than 1%. Mm. So, so when my, my philosophy is when in doubt, thrombolyze. Don't mm. don't find an excuse not to thrombolize. Find a mm. reason to thrombolize. Reason to don't thrombolize, find yes. an excuse not to thrombolize. There are many mm. people who are negative, you know. I mean, it depends on your mindset. <laughs> many people who are negative, they will find a reason why you should not <laughs> thrombolize. But it is important to, to find a reason to thrombolize, not an it's excuse thrombolize. not to thrombolize. So it is yes. a mindset. And I think we have to change mindsets of people. It's difficult to do that, but we have to do it. Dr. Jindal? Yes, sir. You are rightly said, sir. So, uh, 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 first of all, we need to create awareness in our surrounding, in our periphery areas, like in our uh, this thing, vicinity where we practice. So, we need to educate our uh, colleagues, our small uh, nursing home or and all that uh, so that uh, we can increase more and more uh, patient thrombolysis uh, so that more patients can get benefit out of thrombolysis. So in Delhi, I am doing this in my vicinity in around 8-10 kilometer areas. There are so many nursing homes. So what I do uh, used to do, I used to do small, small CMEs. I uh, used to offer them cocktail and dinner with the RMOs, with the resident doctors. So I sensitize them so much that whenever any patient come to them with the acute stroke-like symptom, they immediately send the patient to me. So that's why I used to uh, thrombolize so many patients. So I think that's very good strategy uh, that we should uh, capture these small, small nursing homes because most of the time patient, first of all, will go to their nearby small nursing home, not directly come to big hospital. So I think these are the areas where we can tap and we can uh, educate the uh, our uh, our colleagues uh, over there, so that maximum patient can benefit of thrombolysis. Yes, sir, absolutely. And you have to give the cocktails, otherwise they don't come. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> and that is the bitter, bitter truth. <laughs> bitter truth. <laughs> but, but it is there. It is there all over the world. It's not only in all India, over. it's all over the world. So nothing to feel shy about. And yes, we sir. must do this. We must yes. do this. I think uh, we can end now. Uh, yes, sir. We are a little bit over time, but uh, I must say it was a fantastic evening and Same. I learned a lot.